Welcome everybody to your Thursday morning yoga practice. Willa Cather uh, was uh, an American writer, novelist. She wrote in the early um, 1900s. Uh, and I doubt that she was doing yoga then, certainly not in spandex. But I feel that Willa Cather has or had the heart of a yogi. I wanna read you this really short thing that she wrote. That is happiness, to be dissolved into something complete and great. So what she wrote there, that is happiness, to be dissolved into something complete and great, is really what all of yogic philosophy comes down to. As yoga spread through the years, the philosophy branched out in different directions and different people say different things, but it all comes back to this idea that we are part of something greater, that we are part of a whole. And to be dissolved into something great doesn't mean that we just give up our identity to be part of the whole, because you contribute something to the whole that I can't. And I contribute something to the whole that you can. So we retain our individual identities while dissolving into something greater. And you've felt this if you are a singer, uh, a singer who can harmonize. Sometimes you might notice that when you're singing with other people, you don't really know which voice is yours and which voice is someone else's because you've created this sound that is fully different from what each individual person could do. You know this if you've been to a concert or for younger people, a DJ set where the music and maybe the lights and the performance bring you into a place where you feel like you are really part of something greater with all of these people around you, but you're still doing your own unique sort of dance within that. So what we'll try to do in our practice today, even though we're all in our individual yoga studios, we'll try to dissolve into something greater. We are moving together, we're breathing together, and we will try to create something greater together. So find your seat that feels comfortable for you. Any seat works and close your eyes. Take a deep inhale through your nose, breathing together here. And then slowly exhale through your mouth. And then let's do that together again. Big inhale through your nose. Long, slow exhale through your mouth. Turn your palms up and bring your hands together at your heart. This heart uh, or this position of our hands at our heart is called Anjali Mudra. And while we're joining our hands at our heart, we are symbolizing uniting together left and right, masculine and feminine, two parts of a whole coming together. And our hands are held in front of our heart because we are extending our heart energy from our thumbs touching our heart out through the fingertips. And we're also receiving energy from the fingertips back into our hearts. So individuals becoming part of the whole. Make your commitment to do your thing today on your mat while also dissolving into something greater as we make these shapes as we take on these postures, as we breathe together, as we flow together. And then release your hands down, separating your palms, but staying connected through your heart to something greater. And then gently open your eyes. All right, friends who have joined us recently, welcome, glad that you're here. I just put into the chat again, a link to today's playlist. If that's something that you want to follow along with, or if you're playing your own music, now is the time to press play. And then we are going to sit on our mats at the back end of your mat. We're gonna work our way to the front, but sit on your mat at the back end of your mat. So we'll sit in a cross leg position here. Let's put the right shin in front. 
Take your hands just right uh, below your knees, tops of your shins, lift your heart up and we'll do a little breathing together here. Exhale, cat pose, open from shoulder to shoulder across your back. Inhale, cow pose, open from shoulder to shoulder across your front. Keep going, exhaling for cat and inhaling for cow. After your next cow pose, try to come into a neutral spine and take both arms up overhead as you exhale forward bend. So bring your hands out in front. This is pretty early for uh, this kind of hip opener. So just use your hands as breaks here. Some of you will wanna stretch those arms out and come all the way down. Some of us will stay a little bit higher here, just a little bit of a hip opener. And then walk your hands back in. Bring your hands to your heart. We're gonna place the soles of the feet on the mat as wide as the mat is. Try your best to sit up tall here. Take a breath in. As you exhale, take both knees to the right. Interlace your fingers and straighten your arms, pressing your hands out in the direction your knees are pointing. Inhale back to the center, hands at your heart, Anjali Mudra as that reminder, knees come up. And we're gonna continue doing this walking forward. Exhale, knees to the left, interlace your fingers, press your palms forward. Inhale to the center, hands to Anjali Mudra. Exhale to the right. Inhale up, keep going. You might have to reset your feet so that they stay wide on your mat. Just going back and forth, side to side. You'll notice that you start to creep towards the front of your mat. The next time you go to the right, you're gonna stay at the right. And then bring your left hand to your left hip. Bring your right hand behind you. Here, we're gonna lift the hips off the ground. So take a breath in. And as you exhale, press down into that right hand, lift your hips up and turn and look towards that back corner of your mat, back uh, left corner of your mat, the far corner. And then inhale, lower your hips back down, hands to your heart, bring your knees up and then take your knees over to the left. Bring your right hand to your hip, left hand behind you, Breath in here, and then as you exhale, lift your hips up, look back towards that back right corner of your mat or the far corner. And then inhale, lower your hips back down, turn to the front, cross your legs again, this time left shin in front, take your arms up overhead and on and exhale, pour forward, walking your hands out. Our class today is designed around hip opening. We'll have a full spectrum class, but it's focused on hip opening. Walk your hands back in and then make your way up to standing. So I'm gonna to turn to face you. You can stand wherever you want. Bring your hands to your hips. So we're gonna do a little bit of standing balance with some hip circles. If, it's, if your balance is tricky, you can bring your hand to a wall or have the wall nearby just in case you need it there. So we're gonna stand, I'll mirror you here. We're gonna stand on the right foot, lift the left knee up to hip height. So try to get a 90 degree angle in the knee and try to keep that angle as you take your knee out to the side and back behind you and down and back where you started. That's one. Four more of these circles around in this direction. I'm counting. We've got one more to go around in this direction and now circle in the opposite direction. So take your foot back, knee out to the side and then forward. Just getting a little looser in the hip, working on the balance. One more around and then come into a standing pigeon. 
Cross that left ankle above your right knee, hands to your heart, shift your hips back. Try to keep your chest lifted up here. Interlace your hands and press your palms straight forward. And then maybe keeping those hands interlaced, take the arms up and then hands back to your heart. Stand upright, put your foot down onto the ground and we'll repeat that on the second side. So hands to your hips, bring your weight into your left foot, bring your right knee up to hip height and then circle your knee out to the side, back behind and out in front. Try to keep that 90 degree angle in your knee and go slowly here, just trying to get range of motion through the hip. We've got one more around in this direction and then take it in the opposite direction. So take your foot back behind you, knee out to the side and forward. We've got two more. And last one here, come into that standing pigeon prep, hands to your heart, hips go back. Interlace your fingers, turn your palms forward, really reach out in front of you. And then keeping the hands interlaced, take the arms up, lift the chest up, sink the hips a little bit, and then hands back to your heart, stand up, lower your foot to the ground. Stand right up at the top of your mat. We're gonna flow with our breath here. Remember, we are breathing and flowing together, creating some sort of energy together that's greater than the whole. When your hands are at your heart here, remember that's your commitment. Inhale, take both arms up, stretch up tall. Exhale, forward bend. In your forward bend, take a big inhale through your nose. Big exhale through your mouth. Take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, stay in the forward bend. Tops of the shoulders lift away from the floor, but the head sinks down. Move your head around a little bit, loosen up your neck, and then start to bring your hands away from your back. Hands back to your hips and then down to the ground. Inhale, lengthen forward halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog. Flow with your breath, inhale into plank pose. Exhale, lower, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, maybe upward dog. You decide the back bend you're ready for. And then on your exhale, downward facing dog. On your inhale, lift your right leg back and up behind you. On your exhale, bring your right knee to the outer right arm and then lower the right foot to the ground outside your hand. Lower your hips a little bit, but keep the back leg straight, look forward, and then back to one leg dog. We'll do that four more times. Exhale, knee to the outside of the arm, lower the foot down, lower the hips, look forward. One leg dog. Exhale, slowly bring the knee forward, connect it, lower the hips, look forward. Two more. One leg dog and on this last time, bring your foot forward, plant it. We're gonna hold right here. Lower your back knee to the mat. Make sure your right foot is on your mat and not outside of it. Place your left hand just on the inside of that right thigh and then twist around to the right. So you're gently straight, straightening that right arm, trying to press the right knee away. See if you can look back and see that back left corner of your mat. Inhale, back around to the front. Lower your right fingertips down onto the floor on the inside of that right leg. Lift your back knee up, spin the back heel down to the ground. Side angle pose, sweep your left hand back past your left hip and up and over your ear. If this is pinching a lot in that front hip, you can come up instead of having the fingers on the ground, come up, but keep your arm on the inside of your leg, helping to open up your inner hip or really inner thigh here. 
Side angle pose, variation. Inhale, lift up to warrior two. Exhale, reverse warrior. And then windmill your hands to the ground. Step back to one leg dog, right leg lifts. You have options here. One leg flow, keep both feet on the ground and flow or hold your downward dog or child's pose, but let your breath be your flow. We're trying to connect here in our way, through our breath, through our movement together. You got it. Okay, front downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg back and up behind you. Exhale, knee to the outside of the left upper arm and then plant your foot, lower your hips a little bit, look forward. Back to one leg dog on your inhale. Exhale, bring it forward, plant, lower the hips, look forward. Inhale, one leg dog. Three more of these. Use your core to help you get that knee where you want it. This is number four for me. On that fifth one, as you bring your knee forward and plant your foot, you're gonna hold right here, lower the back knee to the ground, pitch a little weight into the right hand, bring the left hand to the inside of that left thigh. See if you can work your left arm a little bit straighter. Take your head back, twist, look back over that left shoulder. See if you can see the back right corner of your mat. And then inhale, back around to the front. Left arm on the inside of the left leg. Make sure that left foot is on the floor. Lift the back knee up and then spin the heel down. As you inhale, take your right hand back past your right hip up overhead and then right over your ear. Pull the shoulder back, side angle pose, variation here. And then as you inhale, lift up to warrior two and a reverse warrior, stretch out that left side body and then use your exhale to dissolve the pose into the flow one leg dog or two leg dog, a regular dog it is. There's not really such a thing as a two leg dog. Yeah, everybody's looking great. From downward facing dog, walk, step or hop your feet to the top of your mat and fold over your legs. Inhale, rise up, arms stretch up high, exhale, everything comes together and flows in and out of your heart. That's the portal that connects you, dissolves you into something greater. Inhale, lift your arms up, exhale, forward bend. Inhale, lengthen out, take your vinyasa here, planting your hands and jumping into chaturanga maybe, or stepping back to downward dog. Breath and movement connected. Once you get that connection, you can start to feel connected into the whole here. Moving and breathing together, although we're all slightly different. From downward facing dog, lunge your right foot to the top of your mat. Come up to warrior two. So we're gonna go between warrior two and skandasana, which is a side lunge into the back leg. So from warrior two, bring your hands together at your heart, straighten your right knee, bend into your left knee, side lunge, you decide how low you go. Inhale, back up to warrior two. And we're gonna go back and forth. Exhale, hands to your heart, Skandasana. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, Skandasana. Inhale, warrior two. One more time, come to Skandasana. And then as you inhale, just straighten that right leg. So you should be in a wide leg standing forward bend facing the left side of your mat. Take your hands behind your back. Interlace, chest lifts, exhale, forward bend. If you're ready, 
or as you're ready, bring your hands away from your back. As you get the weight of the arms coming forward, it will deepen and intensify that forward bend. So really listen to your back body and your shoulders. Good, keep the forward bend, release your hands down to the mat. We're gonna take a bound skandasana here. So take your right hand and flip it so that your fingertips point back behind you. That right hand is between your legs and right fingertips are pointing back. Take your left hand to the outside of your right ankle. Keep holding on to the right ankle and now side lunge into that left knee. Pulling against the bind of your hand against your ankle to help open up your mid back. And then inhale, straighten your leg, hands down to the mat. Fold in here and then hands to your hips. Inhale, rise up. Take goddess pose or horse pose. Turn your toes out a little bit. Bring your hands just above your knees. So hands are on your thighs. If you can get your arms straight, you're gonna get a little bit of a deeper stretch than you will if your elbows are bent. Take a breath in, we're gonna twist. Exhale, twist to the right. So left uh, shoulder dips forward. Inhale, center. Exhale, dip left. Inhale, center. One more time to the right and center. And one more time to the left and center. Straighten the legs. Turn the toes to point forward. Bring your hands to your waist. We're gonna take a standing wide leg back bend here. So strong in the belly neutral in the low back, inhale, lift up through the ribs and through the shoulders, and then exhale, back bend. Inhale, back up, triangle pose, turn your front toes forward, open the arms out, and then reach forward, touch your right fingers down, take your gaze up past your left fingers, And then exhale, hands down to the mat. So come into lunge, lift your back heel up here. Walk your right foot farther towards the outer edge of your mat and bring your right hand on the inside of your right foot. So get that right hand right underneath your right shoulder. Five push-ups here. Inhale, bend your elbows to lower. Exhale to straighten. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, one more, inhale, exhale, spin the back heel down, come up to warrior two, reverse warrior, and now half moon pose. Come on to your right foot and your right fingers. So I'm gonna ask you to hold this half moon pose. Decide what variation of half moon pose you wanna be in. Maybe you take the sugar cane variation where you bend your knee and reach back with your hand and grab your foot. Maybe you bring both hands to your heart, symbolizing that action of your heart melting into the greater ebb around us, or the greater flow around us, and that greater flow coming back in. About two more breaths here, holding your half moon. And then hands down, step back to lunge, step back to one leg dog or however you wanna flow here. From downward facing dog, bring your left foot to the top of your mat in lunge. And then come up to warrior two. And we'll go back and forth between warrior two and skandasana or side lunge into the back knee. Bring your hands to your heart, side lunge into your back knee. Inhale, back up to warrior two. You're gonna have to pivot the feet around a little bit here. Exhale, side lunge. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale. 
Inhale, two more, side lunge, warrior two. This time when you come into your side lunge, hold right there and then just straighten that leg. Wide leg standing pose facing the right long side of your mat. Take your hands behind your back, interlace with the other thumb on top, open across the chest, keep that opening and then fold forward. And if you like, bring your hands away from your back. Okay, release your hands down to the floor. And we'll take that bound skandhasana here. So take your right, uh, yeah, right fingers back. Walk your left hand to the outside. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. I think you take your left fingers back, that's it. Walk your right hand to the outside of the left ankle and make the bind there. Bring your feet closer together if you need to make that bind. And then side lunge into your right knee. Twist around here. Maybe feeling a stretch across the mid back. And then inhale, release. Hands to your hips and inhale, stand up. Come into that goddess stance again. Hands just above your knees and four times total will twist. Take a breath in as you exhale, bring your left shoulder forward, twisting to the right. Inhale, middle. Exhale, right shoulder forward, twist to the left. One more each side. Come to the middle, straighten the legs and we are ready for triangle pose. Turn the front toes forward, open the arms out, deep breath in, reach forward and then touch those left fingers down to the earth and reach the right fingers up to the sky. Take your gaze up past your hand. And then hands down to the floor, come into lunge, bring your left arm inside the left hand and walk that left foot out enough so that you can get the left hand underneath the left shoulder. Five push-ups. Inhale, bend the elbows to lower. Exhale, straighten the arms to lift up. Four more. Inhale and exhale. After that last one, lower the back heel down. Come up to warrior two and reverse warrior, and now half moon pose. So we'll take a couple of breaths to find the half moon variation that we want. Maybe hands at the heart as a reminder of what we're trying to do today, dissolving into the whole, offering something there and accepting, receiving what the whole has for us. About two more breaths here. And then hands down, step back into lunge, step back to downward dog or one leg dog. I'll see you in downward dog when you're done connecting movement and breath through your vinyasa. Bring your feet to the top of your mat. See if you can fold in a little bit more this time. And then inhale, rise up, arms reach up to the sky. 
exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, chair pose, lower your hips, lift your arms up, strong belly, and a little bit of a tilt down of the tailbone, draw the shoulders back. On your exhale, bring your hands to your heart, twist to the right here. First option is to hold the twist in chair. Second option is to go for a revolved crow pose. In that pose, you reach your hands down to the floor and then bend your elbows and look forward. Think about drawing your chin forward. That's gonna help you take your weight forward. Sorry, I cannot demo this one for you today. Right shoulder's not gonna take me there today. And then as you're ready, come on back up to your twisted chair or meet the rest of us there. And then regular chair pose. And then finally, hands to the ground, straighten those legs, fold over them. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, meet me in downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg back and up behind you. Bend your knee and twist open. And let that twisting open lengthen through the right side body, but also the front of the right hip. Inhale, stretch your leg back, square your hips. And then as you exhale, lunge your foot up to the top of your mat. Come up to high crescent pose. Keep the lower body as it is. Arms will come into an eagle wrap. So bring your arms forward. We'll wrap the right arm under the left arm. Out in front. Keep the eagle wrap of the arms. Exhale, warrior three. Step back gently into your lunge, still keeping the arms wrapped. We'll go for full eagle here. So stand onto your right leg, bring the left leg over. Maybe lower your hips a little bit more here. Unwrap your arms, bring them to your hips. Unwrap your arms, bring them into a standing pigeon pose. Reach down with your left hand, grab your left foot. We're gonna come up to standing hand to big toe pose. So maybe you don't grab your foot, maybe you grab your knee and lift up, taking your knee out to the side, or if you've got the foot, taking your leg out to the side. There you go. And then gently release your foot, bring it down to the ground, hands to your heart. And we remember why we're doing this in the first place, <laughs> to feel a part of something greater. Inhale, chair pose, lower the hips. Lift the heart. On your exhale, hands to your heart. Twist to the left. Bring that right arm across. Again, first option is to hold the twist. Second option is to come into the revolved chair pose. So lowering the hips and getting the hands down onto the ground. Holding the twist the whole time. Take your gaze forward, take your chin forward. Start to bend your elbows and give a little bit of a push into the legs to help move your weight out of your feet and into your hands. Yeah, I see you, looking good. When you're ready, come back up to revolved chair. Regular chair. And then finally, straighten the legs, hands down onto the ground, fold in. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, take your vinyasa, hands down onto the ground. Okay. 
from your downward dog. Inhale, lift your left leg to the sky and then bend your knee and twist open. See if you can feel some extension opening in the front of that left hip and lengthening through the left side body. Inhale, stretch your leg back, square your hips. And on your exhale, lunge your left foot to the top of your mat. So come up to high crescent pose. Back heel is lifted, arms up overhead. And then bring your arms around into an eagle wrap. Here, we'll bring the right arm under the left arm out in front. Keep that eagle wrap. Exhale, warrior three. Gently step back. Keep the eagle wrap of the arms and we'll take full eagle with the legs now. So standing onto the left leg, Bring the right leg over, wrapping and holding here. And then bring your hands to your hips, unwrapping your arms, hands to your hips. Unwrap your legs enough so you can come into a standing pigeon. Hips going back, chest lifting up. And then we'll go to hand to big toe pose. So hand reaches down and grabs Right hand reaches the right foot or right hand reaches the right knee, stand up. And then straighten that leg out, say at about a 45 degree angle or so. There you go. Oh, everybody's looking so good. Breath in and then on and exhale, gently release your foot, let it glide down to the floor. Hands back to your heart. We've got one more flow opportunity here. You can take it or leave it. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lengthen out. We're all gonna meet in downward facing dog. Okay, from downward dog, bring your right leg into pigeon prep. Still focusing on these hip openers. Get that right leg situated where you like it. And if you just can't find a place that feels comfortable enough, come onto your back for a reclining pigeon. You have a lot more control here. So be easier on knees and ankles, the reclining pigeon will. If you're in the regular pigeon, start to walk your hands forward. Maybe you bring your elbows onto blocks or, or some sort of prop that uh, lifts the ground up for you. Or you might walk the arms out in front and lower down, forehead to the mat. If your arms are stretched out in front, start to walk them back in so that you're on your elbows first. And then we will twist to each side here. So press down, uh, we'll twist to the left first. So bring that left hand out to the side and then bring your right elbow across. So some of you will be able to put your the back of your upper arm into the arch of your foot and then bring your hands into prayer or maybe elbow is in front of the foot and hands come into prayer. So the trick here as you twist is to keep the, or try to keep the front of the left hip moving down towards the floor as the left shoulder draws back in your twist. 
this bothers your right wrist. You can make a fist with your right hand and then place your left palm on top of that fist. Inhale, release, and we'll twist the other way. So we're still in pigeon prep with the right leg in front. Bring your left arm across, maybe getting the elbow down, palms come together and then twist. Pull that right shoulder back, take your gaze up past the right shoulder. And then inhale, lift back up. So come onto your fingertips, take a little bit of a back bend here and then draw your right heel closer to your left hip. So we want that right knee cap pointing forward, put your weight into your right hip and swing that left leg around and cross the left foot to the outside of the right leg. So you've got the sole of the left foot on the ground, left knee pointing up, right knee pointing forward. And here we twist. Take your left hand behind you and your right arm up, deep breath in. And then as you exhale, twist to the left, hand grabs the front of the knee, eye of the elbow grabs the front of the knee, or you can bring your arm all the way across and twist. See if you can see that back right corner of your mat as you twist around. And then inhale, release to the front. We're gonna swing that left leg all the way back, hands down in front, step back to downward facing dog. Pedal your legs out a little bit, take a one leg dog, whatever feels good for you here. And then we'll go to the second side. So pigeon prep with the left knee down a little bit wider than the left wrist. Find the angle of the shin where you get opening, but not pain. And if you just can't find something that's semi comfortable here, come onto your back for reclining pigeon and then settle down into your pose. If your arms are stretched out in front, walk back, come onto your elbows or your forearms to begin. And then we will start to twist around to the right. So place your right hand out to the right a little bit and then bring that left arm across. So the left elbow is reaching over towards the right side of your mat. Maybe you bring your hands into prayer. And remember, try to keep that right hip heavy and rotating towards the floor as the right shoulder rolls open. And then inhale, release, hands down to the mat. We'll twist the other way. For me, this one's a little bit harder. So you bring your right elbow across over to the left side of your mat palms together, or maybe you make a fist with that right hand and twist around. And then inhale, release, come on up. Come into a little bit of a back bend here, fingertips on the floor, maybe on block. And then draw your left heel back towards the front of your right hip. So you point your left knee more towards the front of your mat. Sit onto your left hip, swing the right leg around and then cross the foot to the outside of the left thigh. Try to get the sole of that right foot connected to the earth. 
Take your right hand behind you, left arm up, sit tall. The taller you are, the more length you have in the spine, the more twist you'll get. And then as you exhale, twist around, look back over your right shoulder. You might see the back left corner of your mat. And then inhale, release back to the front. Swing that right leg back behind you and come back to our last, uh, probably last downward dog of the practice. Take a one leg dog or walk the knees out, whatever feels good to unwind that series of poses for you. On Tuesday, I mismanaged my time and ran out of time for an inversion. I promised one today, so now's the time. That's why I said maybe last downward dog. So I'm gonna talk you through head stand, but you can take any inversion that you like. I know some of you love your handstands, so you can take those, maybe handstand against the wall, head stand against the wall. You can come into a shoulder stand, legs up the wall, whatever feels good for you. I'll talk you through headstand. If you wanna take your mat to the wall, you can do that. We'll come into a tripod headstand. So on your knees, place your hands on the mat kind of closer to your knees and then bring the, your head to the floor. So the part of your head you want on your floor is not the flat, or flat-ish top of the head, but roll a little bit more towards the hairline. That's gonna help you keep that natural or try to keep that natural curve in the neck. And then just use your eyes to gauge that you have uh, equal distance between your hands side to side and from your hands reaching forward towards your head. From here, draw your belly in and then work the muscles in the upper back. Think about lifting the fronts of the shoulders up away from the floor. Tuck your toes under and then lift your knees off the mat. Start to walk your feet in one foot at a time. And then when you get to a place where you can't walk the feet in anymore, then lift one leg into the air. And maybe that's where you are working that one leg lifting. It takes some hamstring flexibility to get here. Maybe the other leg will come up to meet it, staying strong in the upper back. You got it. Whatever inversion you've chosen here, try to stay with it just a little bit, knowing that we all, and when I say we all, I mean most of us, are finding that inversion, finding that new way of looking at things. You're looking really good. I see some great variations of different inversions. When you are ready, if it starts to bring your feet down, if you're in the headstand, try to be really cognizant of slowly bringing the feet down, using your core to control that. Good, once you lift up, move your head around a little bit, loosen up your neck. And then let's meet on our backs. We've got just a little more hip opening here, if you can stand it. On your back, cross your, uh, keep your right foot on the ground, cross your left leg all the way over so there's not a space between your legs and then hug your knees up towards your chest. Stretch your feet in opposite directions and reach up with your hands. You can grab around the base of your shins or maybe your feet. If you're gonna grab the outer edges of your feet, be sure to keep the outer ankles really working. So this is a reclining longhorn pose. Soles of the feet reaching in opposite directions and the hands or the arm strength is helping you Pull them in a little bit, and you might even rock across your back a little here.
Okay, release your feet. You're gonna put that right foot back down on the ground. Keep the legs crossed as they are. Take your arms out to a T. Take a breath in here and as you exhale, take your knees to the right. Look back over your left hand. Try to keep that left shoulder on the ground or close to the ground. Inhale, bring your knees up, unwind your legs, and we'll go for the second side. So this time, left foot stays on the floor, right leg crosses all the way over. Draw your knees up towards your chest, reach the, your feet in opposite directions, reach up with your hands, grab on at the base of the shins, or maybe around the outer edges of the feet. Maybe you take a few side to side rocks across your back here. And then release your hands. We'll put that left foot on the ground, keeping the right leg crossed all the way over, arms to a T, breath in here. And then as you exhale, take your knees to the left and your gaze to the right. Inhale, bring your legs back up. Uncross them and then take a full happy baby pose. Reach up, hold on to your feet, widen the knees out. Use a little bit of that arm strength to help draw the knees towards the floor. So this is our last hip opener. It's also a low back stretch and it really grounds the low back uh, or that grounds the back body the back of the torso into the earth, preparing us for Shavasana when we really release, dissolve into something greater, the beautiful earth. So as you're ready, release your feet and stretch your legs out. It is Shavasana time. You've earned it, you're here. Cover up as you need to keep you warm and comfortable here in your corpse pose. And then once again, we will breathe together. So with me, big inhale through your nose, long, slow exhale through your mouth. And again, big inhale. Exhale. And then let yourself really dissolve here. Let your breath be easy. Try not to dam the breath up in the throat or in the chest. Just let it ebb and flow and let that ebb and flow of the breath be a reminder that you are putting your unique energy into this greater whole and you're also accepting from this greater whole energy that we create what you need. That is happiness to be dissolved into something complete and great.
energetically tap back into your breath, the easy ebb and flow that allows you to dissolve into something greater, something bigger. Begin to gently reawaken yourself. Use little movements in your hands and in your feet. And then introduce bigger movements, maybe a little rocking. Maybe you stretch your arms overhead. And as you're ready, roll to your side, right side if you can. And take a moment to honor your unique gifts, the gifts that only you can offer into this greater whole energy that we create. And take a moment to honor the gifts of others that allow us to be part of something bigger, even though we're in our individual yoga shalas here. And then as you're ready, come up to a seat and close your eyes. And then finally, we join our hands together in Anjali Mudra, once again, finding the symbol of everything coming together. I hope as you go through your day, you can feel the pulse of something greater than you are, something that we connect into that leads to that happiness that Willa Cather wrote about. Let's take a moment to send this collective energy we've created through our practice together out to those in need, those in pain, those who might just need a little extra boost from us today. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.